And uh, with no further ado, I'll uh, hand it over to our two main speakers today, Danielle De Winter, Coach Chief Financial Officer at Hearst Business Media, and Harold Wiseman, uh, Technical Business Analyst. Great. Thanks, Charles. Can you all hear us? OK, <laughs> great. Uh, first of all, show of hands. Who is not using Aptis today? Raise them high. It's kind of hard to see, actually. There's big lights. OK, because believe it or not, we were in your seat last year. So now we are, um, over the next 20 minutes, we're gonna, talk to, we're gonna walk you through uh, our journey. We're gonna tell you a little bit about Hearst, about Hearst Business Media, how we came to consider uh, Aptis and contract lifecycle, and some of the, the challenges that we were dealing with and also the benefits that uh, we achieved. So hopefully that's gonna be worthwhile. That's okay. You met us. So Hearst. Uh, Hopefully a lot of you have heard of Hearst. It's a company that's been around for about 130 years. Um, they, most of us know us for our sexier brands like Cosmopolitan and ESPN. Um, it's got 360 uh, businesses, 20,000 employees. We're from Hearst Business Media. What is that? We're still sexy. Um, we make uh, over $2 billion. Um, we're the B2B side, more of an information services business. Uh, nearly 100% digital, and you, you can't get sexier than mid 90% uh, renewals. So um, that's business media. And here is just a little bit more of a visual as to what business media means. We own, um, we have three verticals: kind of the financial side, the healthcare side, and then also the uh, transportation side. So as you saw on the last slide. One of our growth strategies at Hearst Business Media is, is to grow and to acquire businesses through acquisition. And so what we realized is that we kept bringing these businesses on and we were adding all this complexity. Just our technology, our processes, they got really complex. And so we decided that, and actually I'm a very strong advocate of, I think we should be unique and special for the solutions that we sell, but we don't need to be unique and special for the way that we actually process things. How we create a contract, how we send out a bill, how we book a journal entry, let's make that simple. So uh, luckily we have great sponsors at Hearst Business Media that supported our journey. And how did we do it? We got all our business leaders together and we talked about these processes around the, the quote to cash, that customer life cycle. And we identified pain points and opportunities. Where were the headaches? Things around the lack of uh, communication and coordination and how could we just make it easier? So. Um, we pulled uh, FTE, volume, um, volumetric data, we did benchmarking with EY, uh, we documented all the processes. That's one way to, to really start. And um, then we pulled all our finance leaders together and we looked at what our recommendations were for improvement and we prioritized them. And without a doubt across our entire portfolio, contract life cycle was a real pain point. It just needed to get simpler. And in reality, it was just a process built on humans, on people, on manual disparate systems that was being held together by just heroic measures. We identified contract management as our first uh, area of improvement. What were our objectives? Number one, to become easier to do business with our customers. At the end of the day, our customers are what matters. And we wanted to make our, our contracting process smooth. We want it to become repeatable and scalable. How do we make this process um, grow and also to support the volume, or support our growth? Like we had you know, thousands and thousands of, of deals and contracts that needed to be created. Uh, we really wanted to provide transparency to the, the process. We weren't really measuring things. I mean, we had Excel trackers beyond trackers beyond trackers, but we weren't really, we had no idea what that life cycle looked like. How long did it actually take a contract um, to get uh, through the door? And number four, really importantly, we wanted to reduce our internal friction. There just didn't seem to be a nice collaboration or cohesiveness between our sales and our finance teams. And as you all know, uh, that's pretty integral to your, your businesses working well. And then ultimately, and very importantly, support the future growth. So we wanted to, as we continue to buy more and more businesses, we want to be able to bring them in much more smoothly and simply to just you know, bolt them into a new process. 
right. Carols? Yes, thank you. And before I became uh, with, on the implementation team and the analyst team, I was on the contracts admin team, so I do have a soft spot for you guys and for these teams. Um, if you want to look at that graphic there, it's really nice. It's kind of the graphic that, or the process that all the business units um, implemented into their system. Now, one of the, to get to that graphic was a big challenge. And I'll show you guys on the next slide some of the detailed challenges we had. But the first thing we had to do, as Danielle mes mentioned, is we had to figure out what each business unit actually did. And not, you know, you have Visio sheets somewhere, Microsoft Word sheets, other places, and nobody knew, really knew what the process was. So that was kind of a, the stepping stone to get everything started in the first place. All right. That. Um, to drill down to our challenges a little bit, um, the first challenges we had was in the pre-contracting -contract, process. So a lot of times, um, you'll get a request through email, through Outlook. You know, somebody will say, hey, I kind of need this contract. I don't really know the details. I'm sure everyone's seen something of that sort. So we really wanted to eliminate that kind of communication and maximize the communication the sales team and the contract team had um, to increase the velocity of the deals and to get, I guess, good data in the system off the bat. Um, the second thing we wanted to tackle is the author negotiating, negotiation part of it. Um, the biggest thing, I mean, we had manual contract creation, critical term dependent on human review, some of those things. But the biggest thing we ha uh, wanted to tackle, I guess, is the version control. I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen it where you're like, well, we sent out five versions. We sent the clean version to the client. But was that the real version? I I'm not sure. So we really want to eliminate that, make sure we're signing the right, right documents, make sure we have, we, making sure we had the right info in there. Um, and just making sure we're being accurate. And last, last but not least is store, storage and um, compliance. A lot, some of our business units, we literally had just drawers upon drawers of documents, okay. where if somebody had a question on a document, they would have to go find that paper document, read through all the amendments, and hopefully find out the information you're looking for. Um, Let me just talk. I see some yeah. smiles. Is this resonating? <laughs> the show, put your hand up if this kind of sounds familiar. Yes. Okay. And, and to be honest, the, uh, that icon on that slide was chosen specifically because we, we did have businesses that that's how they stored their contracts. I'm not going to name names, but uh, <laughs> it's quite there's somebody here that that's how they did it. They had it in color-coded folders. So and now, so, yeah, as I say, now we talked about we talked about the pain points which people recognize. Now it's time to talk about just some of our benefits. What are the the real uh, improvements that we've seen already? So yeah, the first benefit was standardization. Now what we did with Aptis, now all our business units are generally following the same process. You know, you have the request, the generation, the send for review and signature. Before, it kind of was all over the place. So it's been really good with that. Um, accessibility, this has been huge for all our business units. Now, everyone can go to one place. They can see where their document is. They can see the status it's in. And they can see if it's signed or in effect. Um, before, you know, you'd see a lot of these emails coming through where they CC the world. Hey, do you remember that one document from three months ago? Did that get signed? And nobody can tell you. So it's been really great with that. And then. Um, Last, the last one I want to hit on is approval workflow. Um, this is really good because then with, with Aptis, you can designate you know, portions of your agreement that you want to go to automatic approval. For example, limitations of liability. Um, you want your you know, CFO or CIO to definitely look at that if that ever, goes, ever gets changed. So Aptis is a great way to start tracking that and putting that as an automatic workflow as opposed to having someone remember to send that out for approval. Yeah. And I actually just want to go back quickly to standardization. Like, from my viewpoint, I can't underestimate how important that is. Like, I just saw our portfolio grow. And as we added more businesses, it just really created this complexity. And you may not see, but there's a huge support structure that has to be built up to support all those different um, systems. And without a doubt, before this uh, initiative, a lot of the businesses would have just chosen their own contract lifecycle tool. And so we've made that conscious effort to say, you know what, let's not do that. Let's really, let's try to um, uh, get these benefits of standardizing and simplifying the way that we work. 
Uh, and so then moving down to business partnering, this is something that's really important to me and near and dear to my heart is that, you know, I really wanted to improve the coordination between sales and finance within each of our businesses, but then also with customers. You know, as I said before, our customers are key. You know, we're a recurring revenue business model. It's all about our subscriptions. We want to make sure those customers are happy so that when it comes to renew time, they renew and they're sticky. So we wanted to, uh, you know, anything that we could do to bring in e-signatures could speed up that process. And then also back to the, the sales and finance. Without a doubt, I had heard that, that pain point that, you know, my head of sales would say that he felt that he spoke a different language to the contract team. And with Aptis, we, we made them speak one language, as cheesy as that sounds. Self-service. This has been a really big win. And what that means is really um, risk, a, risk profiling your, your contracts to make them high touch or low touch. So all your contracts, they don't need to be treated equally. Like an NDA or a master license agreement, a master subscription agreement, if you can get your customer to agree to certain terms that you've standardized, then that can just go through the process without being touched. But you know, if you have a customer that wants to change one of your clauses, then it would kick out. Then it would go into a contract queue and it would get more eyes on it. This is a huge win for, for a CFO. I mean, that means faster revenue. That means a quicker close. That, it makes me extremely happy. <laughs> and which goes to the, the next page, like fast, or next point, faster revenue. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all very P&L focused. So if we can increase that revenue, and then also, you know, think of ways to do business better and be a bit more efficient, it's going to help our bottom line. And that just makes us a much stronger team. So just to add on to the benefits, um, we thought we'd actually bring you some, uh, just a sample of some of the results that we're seeing across the businesses. So as I touched on self-service, 20%. Some of our businesses were bigger adopters, so they were seeing probably 60 to 70% uh, self-service. But as an average, as we aggregated across all of our businesses, we're seeing 20%. That's huge. I mean, you think before all those contracts just went into the queue and they were treated equally. Now it's like those ones just go through the door. So there's, without a doubt, huge time savings. And then also, you know, quicker uh, deal closures and uh, revenue. And before I go to the other things, uh, to tack onto the self-service, one great thing about self-service is that it forces you to standardize. So whereas the exception is a norm, an exception is truly an exception. Um, you know, you're pushing most of your agreements as normal process, as, as opposed to every agreement specific to each client. Um, so that really, it's a really nice thing to see once you actually get it in there. Um, the one to two hours, so, some of our business, for the business unit I work for specifically, it used to be a one, two day turnaround time, now it's one to two hours. Um, we have another business unit specifically that used to be one to two weeks. Yeah. Um, she's a contracts team of one, but now she's one to two hours as well um, with implementation of Aptis. So you do see that those tangible time differences fairly quickly. Uh, the 78% of respondents posted that Aptis is actually very helpful. This is actually a really high number considering we've basically turned upside down most of the processes, or in some cases created a whole new process off the bat. So to have 80%, that's actually really, really good in our eyes. And this was, and these, this survey came out right after we implemented. We, we gave each business, say, two or three months to kind of live and breathe Aptis and the contract tool. So to have that adoption rate be so high has, has been incredible. And it's also, it identified other ways that we could um, retrain because as we all know as much as we do our best to pay attention, sometimes you don't get all the, the details. So um, Harold was able to identify some you know, low hanging fruit to retrain. And then if we go out with this, another survey, I believe without a doubt the, uh, the, the value percentage would go up. So this is a, a last slide on testimonials. And we just wanted to share more about our journey. I mean, it's, it's like any implementation where, you know, change is hard. But we can say very confidently that 
this implementation went, went very smooth. And you know, if you have people saying that it's added value, if it's making their lives better because it's reducing cycle time, that's a, that's a huge, huge win. And then also to have sales, because we all know our sales team may be a little bit less resistant or more resistant, sorry, to change. That um, we had, uh, because they were using Salesforce, we definitely found that they were uh, quicker to adopt this tool since it's native with, um, with Salesforce. And you know, they said a great system that'll bring value. And then even a head of sales said, you know, the fact that he can do a lot of his, uh, his tasks and his work on his mobile phone has been a huge win. Because you think, like all of us, we all have these smartphone devices. I mean, I feel like if I can, you know, organize most of my life around that, that would be wonderful. So uh, I think we just started to. Um, I saw that there's a session. I think, um, and I'm not sure when it is, but it said something about, you know, it's 2017. Let's stop selling like it's 1986. I feel like that's sort of a theme for us too at Hearst. That at times we need to really think of how can we modernize? How can we? you know, improve the way that we do things and just think about how we're going to support our people coming um, through the ranks. And at the end of the day, most of them really want to be able to use their mobile phone. So that's, I mean, one more thing is um, I think what Aptis, uh, Aptis CLM has really just been the first step in our journey. It was more of a discrete process that we were able to look at that was less disruptive in that entire customer life cycle. We're not at the point of you know, making some minor tweaks, but we're, gonna, we're here to look at CPQ and the billing side of it, how we can really you know, benefit from that entire quote to cash cycle. And also what, um, just on that theme of standardization, having one system really gives you so much, so many more options as a CFO that you know, ultimately I want to drive revenue. But if I can look at ways to reduce my costs, that's an, added, that's an added benefit. And having one system and one process really gives you those levers that you can pull. That's it. We're going to give you five minutes back. So I, I hope you found this worthwhile. If you have any questions, Harold and I, I mean, without a doubt, there's no I in team. This couldn't have been done without the best project manager around Ooh. and a lot of the team members <laughs> here. Um, so if you see uh, us, feel free to stop us, and we will share uh, what we can about our journey. So thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much, uh, Danielle. Uh, Thanks, thanks, thanks. And Harold, I just wanted to say, if you guys are from the media entertainment industry, there's going to be another session at 3.15 p.m. There's a speaker area, uh, area outside of the room, so you may be able to, to catch up with Danielle, Harold, or, or, or Raghu. But thank you for attending. Thank you.